Alright, everybody, welcome. Welcome. I want to do one thing before we start really quick, and I want everyone to get up. Guys up, up. And I want you guys to greet people to your left and right. Hugs, handshakes. Welcome, everybody. Make them feel welcome. I mean, if you guys could do me one more favor, you know, there's room in between you guys, if you guys can move to the center of your aisles, so if people do come late, they can sit to the outside. So guys, please move into the center, make room on the outside, so people don't have to squeeze by. And you guys can be seated. So welcome to our first ever Paradise Youth Christmas concert. We're pretty stoked about it. Um, God has blessed us with this opportunity to put this on. And Plans came together really well. We had a lot of awesome volunteers, and we're just super happy about that. And our youth pastor, all our leaders stepped up. It's just awesome to see. And I just have a few announcements to make before we start. I want to say a prayer, and then we'll start, and you guys will enjoy a Christmas concert, and then followed by work by our youth pastor. But if at any time tonight you guys see, need any any per people to talk to anyone to pray for you or anything. There will be people with these badges walking around and they say prayer team members. You guys can identify them by this and just uh, get yourself familiar with their faces and you can come up to them at any time of the night if you need. They'll be available to talk to you. There's a bunch of them, I think 10, 10 plus of them. And you guys, we will be taking off tonight. If you guys are guests, let it pass by you. It's just for our rental funds and stuff. But if you are a guest, please do not put anything in. Just enjoy your time here and just the fellowship and just hanging out and just enjoying the Christmas concert. And we're here because we believe that Jesus came on Christmas and died for our sins. And that's why we are here today. That's why we gathered and why we want to put on this concert. So I'm just going to lead us in a prayer really quickly, and then we're going to have our awesome worship band play. So you guys will just bow your heads with you. God, I just ask that you would bless the service, Lord. I just ask that you would, your presence would come here, God, and that tonight, if anyone has hurting hearts, if anyone is in need of something from you, God, that you meet them where they are tonight. It does not matter, God, how, how far they are from you, how broken their lives are, how hurt they are, God, that you you love them no matter what, and you will meet them. We thank you for your son that he came at this time. We just ask, ask that you bless this night, Lord. We just pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. You guys are welcome to stand if you want to sing with us. If you want to sit and just enjoy the music, that's totally cool, too. Hope you guys like the music. <laughs>
these are clapping songs, so if you tried clapping before and didn't work, this is your chance, okay? And if you guys don't mind, let's get up, we're gonna stretch and uh, sing with us, Heart to Herald.
Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? That's awesome. Usually on Friday nights, I don't get to preach in front of a grandstand like this, but that's okay. Um, usually we get like, you know, 50, 60 kids showing up. There's a little bit more today, but that's okay. That's awesome. It's a Christmas concert. I don't know about you guys, but this is the ultimate time of the year. You know, it's cold outside. It's freezing and it's Christmas. You walk into a store, there's Christmas carols, uh, you know, going and it's just, I don't know about you guys, but this is the best time of the year for me. Um, you can't work outside. It's just too cold. You're forced to come inside and just enjoy that cup of coffee or, you know, uh, for me, it's a vanilla latte and it's just, it's awesome. And if you're a football player from Mount Baker High School, you know, it's a, it's a, it's cold, but it's a, you're building history and so, or, but with all that said, you know, um, I'm just going to uh, share just a small little message before we dig into the sweets and the sandwiches and everything that everyone uh, has prepped for all the guests and everyone that's, that's attended. Um, if you have your Bibles with, uh, with you, flip to Genesis chapter 3. This is not your typical Christmas uh, message, but it's going to be quick. And we're going to start right from the very, uh, very first book in Scripture. So Genesis chapter 3 verse 21, and it says this. Also for Adam and his wife, Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Those of you guys that are maybe hearing this for the first time, it's an interesting scenario that Scripture paints. And, and what happens in this scenario is Adam and Eve don't do what God tells them to do, right? They, they, and just like any one of us, you know, when we're growing up, or I don't know, I'm a parent of two kids. They all, the kids just always tend to do the one thing you tell them not to do, right? And we as people, we do the one thing that we're not supposed to do, and that's the one thing that always digs us. You know, you're driving down the road, and you're like, you know what? I need to speed up a little bit. And that one time you sped up, there's an officer right there and, and, he, and he pulls you over and he gave, gave you a ticket. So Adam and Eve are in, in, this, in this situation where uh, God tells them not to do something. And they're like, you know what? I bet, you, I bet that fruit is a lot better than the ones we've been eating. So they try it, you know. And, and then God, uh, you know, God basically tells them that they can't be in the garden anymore. And he makes them basically a lamb is slain at that point. The very first death is, is, is an animal that, that died and, 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 and he gave them tunics to cover themselves. Because they all of a sudden thought, saw shame in themselves and so they covered what, they, what made them shameful. The, the, the Scripture just starts painting, painting, or, or, or starts laying out the footsteps of, of a lamb that once is going to come some 4,000 years later, or the Son of God, to cover up all of our shame, guilt. A vivid picture of an atonement is getting painted right from Genesis. And if we flip to John chapter 3, verse 16, I bet you I can ask every person in this, in this building and you have this scripture memorized. But I'm going to read it exactly how it says. And so, John chapter 3, verse 16, and it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I mean, that is the essence of Christmas. Because one time God was sitting back and he's like, man, I love them so much. They don't listen to, they don't do what I want them to do, but boy, I love them. And I don't know, maybe you've never experienced a earth, a, a love from an earthly father. And maybe this is something completely new to you, but there is an internal God out there who created the universe who absolutely, emphatically loves you. And he thought about you 4,000 years ago. He sat down and was looking at the, whole, at the whole universe. And he said, you know what? I love those people so much. I love those people so much that I'm going to give up something that's so, so, is, is so uh, meaningful to me. I cherish this, this, uh, this, 
the sun so much I'm not going to give him up. And on Christmas Day, an infant baby appears. But I want to focus on the one thing. It says that he gave his only begotten son. He didn't give necessarily a child, an infant, you know, but he gave the most precious thing he had to be slain. So that just like from the very beginning, when Adam and Eve were created, their shame was covered up by a lamb that was slain. So that you and I can, can have the same benefit today. We can sit in our pews and when we do wrong, or when you just feel contrapped, you feel cornered, you've hit rock bottom. There's always an answer out there. It's not always visible, but it's a lamb that was slain or a little infant Jesus that was born to take everything that you've ever done, to take all the sins that you've ever committed, the worst crime that you've ever done and to take it upon his shoulders, to take every burden that's out there, every guilt that's out there, put it on his shoulder and get it all nailed to the cross. That's what God gave us. It's a pardon. It's a pardon from, from something that we, we, we deserve death, but it's a pardon for life. That's what he gave us. And I want to tell you guys a, a story. And I'm sure you guys are all familiar with this, but it's, 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 it goes back into history about Abraham and Lincoln. And so one time, uh, this young 17-year-old was in war, and he got so scared. He got so scared, he dropped his gun and ran. And ran. And so the, the, the sergeants, the generals got him, locked him up, and they said, tomorrow morning, Don, we're taking you out, and your life is over. He knew he was facing multiple uh, gun wounds, and he's gonna die. He knew it. And his wife, and his mother found out about this. So she, she directly went to the White House, and she was pleading to Abraham Lincoln. She was saying, you don't get this. My son, my son is gonna get shot tomorrow at dawn for treason. He's young, he made a mistake. Don't, don't shoot him. So the president, President Lincoln grabs a piece of paper, John's, please, um, Johnny is to be set free. And he gives, a, gives that letter to a horse rider and he takes off. He takes off and, and, and he gets the right in time. And he walks up to Johnny and Johnny's in a cell knowing that he is gonna get shot very soon. He has hours left to live. He walks up and he says, he says this, is a, this is a note from Abraham Lincoln. He reads it. It's his pardon. All he has to do is take that pardon and give it to the drill sergeant and they're going to unlock the door because the President of the United States has pardoned him. But Johnny doesn't take it. He says, there's no way Abraham Lincoln would, would scratch something like this on a piece of paper. If Abraham Lincoln would give me a pardon, it would be on a professional piece of paper with his stamp, his initial, his signature. And he takes that letter and just scrumples it and throws it away. Johnny gets shot in a couple hours. A pardon, and then his, 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 his mother takes it to court and wants to, wants to sue the drill sergeant. And Abraham Lincoln said this, a pardon is only as good as, as the person receiving it. Remember that Christmas is only as good as to any of us, it's only as good as really, really realizing what, what, it, what it's all about. And my challenge to you guys tonight is this. Enjoy the fullness of Christmas. It starts from baby Jesus being born, but it doesn't end there. Because God gave his only begotten son to take all the transgressions of the world, to take your sins, to take, to take all iniquity, to take the most shameful thing that you've ever done and put it on his shoulder. That's what Christmas is all about. It's a pardon for you, a key for you to enter eat heaven, eternal life, but it's up to you. It's not gonna be forced on you. It's up to you to take this pardon 
or not. My challenge is to enjoy the fullness of Christmas today. To take the full benefit of this pardon that was granted to us for free, free of charge. There was only one common denominator, and that was love. Love towards you and me, regardless of what we've done in our life. It was all based on love. And I want to challenge you guys tonight. Those of you that might be hearing this for the first time, and maybe you're just in a tough time, in a rough patch in your life, you've never heard about God. I always tell people like that, don't deny it. Don't say, you know what? God doesn't exist. Say, you know what? God, if you're out there, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Be open to the idea. And God will do a miracle in your life. And I'm not just saying this because I, I truly have a passion for that. I truly have a passion for this season because, because I lived it out. I experienced it. The full joy, the, full, the fullness of it, of what it means. And you know how they say there's a reason for the season. Let there be a personal reason for this Christmas in your life. May God bless you all. Amen. And as we wrap up service, um, we don't want to leave you guys hanging. We want to have fellowship with everyone here. And so there's coffee, tea, there's sweets, and they're going to all get brought out. There's sandwiches. And we just, we just want, to, want you guys to hang out for a little bit, get to know us, have a cup of coffee, have maybe a, a donut or two, a sandwich, and, 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 and then we'll be on our ways. But once again, thanks for everyone that came tonight. May God bless you all. And enjoy the fullness of Christmas, man. It's all about Christ being born. Take everything.